Tishik, I think the question we're asking is, who knows what's going on in RT? Do you know what's going on in RT? And if you do, could you maybe shed some light on it for the rest of us? Um, we're nearly three weeks into this whole debacle now, and the national broadcaster still can't even get its story straight. Um, you'd have to imagine if RT screenwriters were writing the script of this as a drama, you could imagine that it might be rejected as being too far-fetched. Uh, last week, my colleague, Deputy Catherine Murphy, asked Ortiz's chief financial officer a very simple and straightforward question when he appeared before the Public Accounts <laughs> Committee. How many barter accounts does Ortiz have? Uh, Mr Collins was adamant that there was just one. We now know that this is not the case. There are three barter accounts. Um, I don't particularly want to single out one individual here. I don't think that that's helpful, but I think the performance of the executives collectively at the two separate committees uh, before the Oireachtas last week were appalling. They were not forthright. They were not transparent. Information had to be dragged out of them. Uh, and we now know that some of that information wasn't accurate. And I think it's really important to remember uh, that this scandal first came to light in early March. So they've now had four months to piece together what happened. And they're still scrambling around, claiming either confusion or ignorance. And I don't think any of us know which one is worse. Um, ordinarily, I think we all know from being on committees that when people appear before Oireachtas committees, they do their homework, they carefully sift through their files, they get all of their relevant information in order before they appear. And that was clearly not done last week. This failure, I think, to get basic information correct raises serious questions about the board as a whole and their capacity to deal with this issue. Realistically, when this whole controversy relates to secret payments made from a barter account, the very least that we could all expect is that they would know how many barter accounts it has. Um, I've seen the kind of defensive note that RT now prepared setting out what a barter account is, what barter accounts do, and how much money went through them. And I really just kind of wonder about the patronising tone of that document, because none of us have any problem with barter accounts being used if they are standard across the media industry. What we do have a major problem with is barter accounts being used as slush funds to secretly top up um, the station's top earner. And we also have a big issue with the apparent complete lack of financial controls or oversight of these accounts and the chief financial officer giving incorrect information about even how many barter accounts there actually are. Not to mention crying poor mouth and demanding pay cuts from its lowest paid, most insecure staff while secretly paying top ups to its most exorbitantly paid staff member. Um, and then things like wasting 2.2 million on musical flop. Mm. Um, but Tishuk, I suppose my question is, you spoke about individual members, but I'm asking about the board of, on the whole. How can you have confidence at this point yeah, in the thank board? You, thank you, Deputy. Um, thank, thanks very much, much Deputy. Um, I, I know a lot about what happens in RTE. Um, their annual report, report and accounts are uh, presented to Cabinet. Um, and in addition to that, um, I have periodic meetings with uh, senior people in, in RT, would meet the DG maybe once or twice a year. Um, but what I can say uh, is the existence of barter accounts, and you're right, it's not the barter accounts per se. Uh, barter accounts, I understand, are used commonly across uh, the media, arts and entertainment sector. Uh, it's the misuse of barter accounts uh, for uh, secret payments. Um, that's the real issue here. Uh, and certainly, um, I didn't become aware of this until the last couple of weeks and only found out uh, last night uh, that there were additional barter accounts. Um, and I'm really bothered about that, quite frankly. I know Thonish does too, spoke to him this morning uh, and spoke to Minister Martin. Uh, so we're not satisfied at all uh, about the answers that we've, we've been given by RT to date. Uh, it's below the standards that you would expect, uh, not just of people working in a public body, uh, but of anyone working in any body, quite frankly. Uh, it is really uh, not a sat satisfactory situation. Uh, there is a difference between giving incorrect information to a committee, or to all, which many of us would have done, uh, and actually lying. So I think that has to be established. Uh, and as you say, um, the executive board is made up of a lot of, in a lot of, of different individuals. Um, and I'm not happy, uh, as Taoiseach, uh, to condemn uh, every single member of that board en masse. I don't think that would be the right thing to do. 
uh, people should be afforded uh, fair hearing uh, due process. We should know what all the facts are, uh, and that's the basis of my position. Um, I think it's one of the things that's really important to highlight as well, and at home, at the weekend, speaking to people, everyone's talking about it, I think, in their kitchens, in the supermarket, everywhere people go, and two things have, have really, I think, came through to me that, for one, it's the outrage and the confusion at the public service broadcaster, and um, of all the kind of organisations that know about, you know, holding people to account and everything, that this kind of drip feed of information is quite surprising to most people. But the other thing that really was echoed was... I think an appreciation for having public service broadcasting and the importance of it, especially uh, today with misinformation online and all of those things. And crucially as well, I think a new found a kind of, or new realised appreciation for the staff in RTE, most of which are on modest wages and do an incredibly good job. And I think everybody's just hoping for an end to this drip feed of information. Um, in her initial statement last week, uh, about the scandal, Shuni Rala said um, that it represented a serious breach of trust, and I think that we can all agree with that. Um, but that breach of trust has now been compounded because it's ongoing, um, and it's doing immense damage because uh, it's undermining people's trust further in the institution, and trust um, that its dedicated and modestly paid journalists and broadcasting worked so hard to build. Um, Tishuk, I'm just last question. How can public trust be restored if there is no accountability? Deputy, I, I, I don't think public trust can be restored without truth, transparency and accountability. So what we need now is an end to the drip feed of information. Um, we need all the information out there, uh, if not today, then certainly in the coming days. Um, with transparency we have truth uh, and then there can be further accountability thereafter. And I think it is essential that we draw a line uh, under this affair uh, as soon as we possibly can. Uh, because I agree with what you've said uh, around the importance of public service broadcasting um, and high quality media um, and high quality production of documentaries and children's programmes and Irish language programmes uh, and all of those things. Uh, they're more important than ever uh, at a time of misinformation and at a time of malign information very often uh, coming from other sources. Uh, so this isn't just about a state-owned enterprise or a semi-state company that has uh, got into some trouble. Uh, it is about um, defending uh, an important aspect of our democracy, uh, which is media freedom uh, and a good public service broadcaster. And that's the work the government will be doing in the coming days.